Well, hi, everybody. Hey, Fred Krop here, coming to you from the Healing Rooms here in Santa Maria, California. And uh, how many of you ever heard the phrase speaking in tongues, right? Or you heard about speaking in tongues. Maybe some of you have spoken in tongues, or maybe some of you are like, what is that? That sounds weird. Well, I want to talk to you today about what the Bible says about speaking in tongues, because guess what? Speaking in tongues is a secret weapon that God has given us that will help us to be overcomers, will strengthen us, will build us up, uh, will, will give us revelation, knowledge from God, so on. But uh, before I get into all that, I just want to read a couple scriptures and I want to pray. But before I do that, I want to just remind you that I have a YouTube channel under my name, Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. And uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, you're going to have, I have lots of teaching, even teaching on what's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit and other messages, many, many messages, over 300 teachings there. And I want you to go there. I want you to subscribe. I want you to click like and click the bell. That way you won't miss out on any of this. But today I want to talk to you about what is this thing called speaking in tongues? Well, let me read a verse to you in, jo in Mark chapter 16, verse 17. This is Jesus talking. Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe. So, are you a believer? These signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. So, Jesus said in that people uh, that were believers in him would speak with tongues. So, that leads us to... What is that? So let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Lord, we thank you again for your word. We, we want to base our life on what your word says, not what we think or somebody else's opinion or some church's doctrine, but we want to base what we believe about everything on your word alone. So would you open your word up to us, Holy Spirit? Speak to us through it. Teach us. The Bible says you're going to lead us into all truth. So lead us into truth today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, what is this thing called speaking in tongues? Well, what it is, is a supernatural ability that God gives to people by the Holy Spirit, the ability to pray in unknown languages or give messages both earthly, in earthly languages and angelic languages. It is actually the Holy Spirit speaking through you. In 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says it this way. He says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Uh, also in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, it says, they all began to speak with tongues, and it says the people understood them and hearing them in their own language. So it's a supernatural ability to speak in, in a language that's from angels. That's why sometimes if you're speaking in tongues, nobody understands it. Nobody can interpret it, even though there are so many, you know, thousands of languages on the earth, they can't interpret it because you're speaking in an angelic language. Or you can be speaking in a tongue and actually be speaking in a language that you don't know, but God's enabling you supernaturally. So it's a super, supernatural ability to speak in a language by the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit is actually speaking or praying through you. Now, there are seven aspects of speaking in tongues or seven things that I see in the Bible about speaking in tongues. The first one is tongues as a sign. Remember now, Mark 16, 17, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they will speak in new tongues. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, verse 22, therefore tongues are for a sign. And we see there in Acts chapter 2 that when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the church, it says uh, the 120 that were gathered in the upper room, they all began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were people gathered around them that were from all nations of the world. And it says we all, it says they heard them all speaking in their own languages. So now we have tongues as a sign to people that why because these people were amazed. How do these people know our language and they're speaking about God while they're talking? So there's tongues as a sign. The second thing aspect of tongues is what we call praying in tongues or praying in the spirit. It's found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Paul says, pray in the Spirit at all times on every occasion. 
in Jude chapter 1, it only has one chapter, verse 20 says this, Beloved, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says, If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So there's tongues as a sign, and then there's tongues as a prayer. Okay, and so it's, it's, and we'll get into this. I'll explain this a little bit more coming up here. The third kind of tongues is tongues as a message. Now, this is where people get flustered about it because they see in the Bible, well, you know, you're not supposed to speak in tongues in a church unless you have an interpreter and blah, 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 blah. And so you shouldn't be speaking in tongues. And they go to a meeting and a bunch of people in a room and they're all praying in tongues and they think, well, this can't be God because they're not interpreting what they're saying. Well, that's not what that's about. See, there's tongues as a message. It's like a prophetic message that has two parts. So it talks about this in 1 Corinthians 12. It says, the gifts of the Spirit, here's a couple of them, it says one of the gifts is different kinds of tongues, and another of the gifts is the interpretation of tongues. So this is a Christian gathering where someone, the Holy Spirit comes on someone, and they have a message in tongues, in maybe an angelic language or another language, and then someone is given the ability to interpret what that person is saying. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 5, it says, He who speaks with tongues shouldn't speak unless there's an interpreter that can, you know, so that the whole church can get the message. So it's talking about a church service. So now we have a, a message uh, in tongues. And then Paul writes, in your, he says, in your church gatherings, he says, someone's going to have a song or a psalm. Someone's going to have a tongue. Someone's going to have a revelation. Someone's going to have an interpretation. And then he says, let everything be done in order. And then he says, if anyone speaks in a tongue, let it be by two or most three and let each one in turn and let somebody else in interpret what is being said. So now we have tongues as a message. The fourth aspect of tongues is tongues as a confirmation to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we see this in Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 15, and Acts chapter 19, that when people were baptized with the Holy Spirit, one of the predominant things that happened to them was that they spoke in tongues. And so here in Acts chapter 10, um, Peter was speaking to this group of Gentiles, non-Jewish people, and it says, while he spoke to them, the Holy Spirit fell on them, and it says they, it's, uh, they all began to speak in tongues. And so later, uh, Peter was asked about this because the Jews said, well, how could the Gentiles you know, how do we know that they're really, you know, God's with them? Because they had a hard time with the Gentiles. But Peter says this. He says, this is Acts 10, verses 44 to 46. Peter says, Peter said, because the gift of the Spirit, when they were filled with the Spirit, he said, when it was poured out on those people that I was preaching to, it says, I heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So tongues is a confirmation of the Holy Spirit. And then number five, the fifth thing, that aspect of the speaking in tongues is tongues as worship. John 4, 24, Jesus said, those who worship me can worship me in spirit and in truth. And 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says, I will, he says, I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the mind. Meaning I will pray in an unknown tongue and then I'll pray with my understanding. Then he says, I will sing, listen to this, I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding. So I'm going to sing a song in tongues. I'm going to sing in an unknown language. And then I'm going to sing with understanding. So there is tongues as worship. Amen. The Bible actually says in Ephesians chapter 5, it says, Don't get drunk with wine, for that is a waste, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, listen to this, hymns, and then it says this, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So a spiritual song can be a song that's sung in tongues, or it can be just a song that's inspired by the Holy Spirit. The sixth aspect of speaking in tongues is tongues as a weapon. In Jude uh, verse 20, Jude only has one chapter again, it says this, Jude says, 
Beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And then in 1 Corinthians 14, 4, it says a person who speaks in tongues is strengthened or builds himself up. And then in Ephesians chapter 6, it says this, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes of the devil. And Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying at all times in the spirit and on every occasion, stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers. Now, we don't know how to pray about everybody's situation. And that's why the prayer, praying in tongues, enables us to pray about things that God wants to do on earth because God can't do anything on earth that we don't come in agreement with. Well, I don't know what's going on in China right now or over in maybe in uh, Muslim countries and there's believers there and maybe they're in trouble right now. But uh, I could be praying in the spirit and actually praying and releasing God's will to maybe save somebody out of a, uh, you know, a life and death situation or save somebody from an accident. And I don't know how to pray, but the God knows and, I, and I'm not aware of it. Or I, you know, sometimes I might have someone laid on my heart and I don't know what's going on with them. And I could pray for them, oh God, bless, you know, Joe, help him, whatever's going on. Or I can pray in the spirit over Joe and I'm actually praying specifically to release God's protection. In other words, a warfare situation over that person's situation. And then fat, lastly, the seventh aspect of tongues is tongues that bring revelation to us. 1 Corinthians 14.2 says, He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, it says, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. And then in 1 Corinthians 14.13, it says this, Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. So there can be praying in tongues that will bring a revelation from God's Word. I'm not talking about you know, things that are outside of Scripture that I'm talking about that brings revelation to us from the Word of God where we pray in the Spirit. It's the Spirit praying through us. We don't know how to pray as we should. It says in Romans chapter 8, but the Holy Spirit will pray through us with groanings and utterings too deep for words. Now, just let me end with this. What are some of the benefits of praying in tongues? Well, first off, in Jude chapter 1, again, it says this. It says, it says, uh, build yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And then it says this, keep yourselves in the love of God. Now, the Bible says God is love. So when you pray in the Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit praying through you. The Holy Spirit is God, and, it, and God is love. So it's, it says that when we pray in the Spirit in Jude, in his uh, letter, he's saying you're keeping yourself in the love of God. So that's one of the benefits. Another benefit is that it makes you strong in the Lord. It says, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, and by the way, I spend lots of time praying in the Spirit. And the cool thing about the praying in the Spirit is you can pray in the car, you can pray while you're walking around the store, just don't shout out real loud, that's kind of weird. You can just pray in the Spirit. Uh, you know, in the shower, you can pray in the Spirit. Wherever you are, you could be praying in the Spirit. But when you're doing that, it's like you're exercising your spirit man's muscles. You're building yourself up in the Lord. Amen. It says in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. And then later it says, Praying at all times in the Spirit. And then praying in tongues releases God's perfect will for your life. I don't believe that we can actually know every detail of God's will for our life. But in Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27, it says this, in the same way, this is Paul writing, in the same way, Paul says, the Spirit helps our weakness for we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. He who searches the heart, the heart knows the mind of the Spirit because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Let me read it to you in the New Living Translation. It says, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants for us to pray, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows the hearts of all 
uh, knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. So now we see that when we pray in the Spirit, this is a, this is a prayer that the devil can't mess up, you can't mess it up, because when you pray in the Spirit or pray in tongues, you're praying the perfect will of God, and you're releasing that will. God can't move until you come in agreement with Him, but you're in, while you're praying in the Spirit, you're agreeing with God, releasing His will in your life, uh, His perfect will in your life. Another one, uh, benefit is that you, it enables you to pray without ceasing. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says pray without ceasing. Well, how do I pray without ceasing? Well, I can pray in tongues wherever I am. Here's another one, and that is praying in tongues will open you up to all the other gifts of the Spirit. Notice on the day of Pentecost when the Spirit was poured out, the first thing that happened was they spoke in tongues. They began to speak in, in tongues. And so Praying in tongues actually is the introduction into all the other gifts. Gifts of healings, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy, gifts of miracles, uh, gifts of healings, uh, and then, of course, tongues and interpretation of tongues. Also, praying in tongues enables you to pray about things that you have no knowledge of. So I just want to encourage you, and I wanted to give you an explanation. Well, what is this thing called praying or speaking in tongues? What's it all about? I want to pray for you because you know what? I don't know how you're going to make it in the future in, a, in, a, in what's going on in the world if you're not getting strengthened with might and power in your inner man. And one of the main ways you do that is through praying in the Spirit. You cannot overdo praying in the Spirit. Now, I know Paul was correcting the Corinthians because they would come to church and talk to each other in tongues. That's weird. He said, don't do that. When you're talking to each other, talk in the language that you speak. But he said this. He says, he said, I would rather speak five words with my understanding than I, than I, speak, than, than I would speak 10,000 words in a tongue. He tells us a little secret. He said, before I spoke five words in a message, I first prayed 10,000 words in a tongue. And there in 1 Corinthians 14, he says, I pray in tongues more than you all. Well, here's a guy who wrote almost a third of the New Testament, and he prayed in tongues a lot. That's where he got his revelation. So let me pray for you uh, that you would begin to activate, if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, Maybe you didn't speak in tongues when you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, but you can speak in tongues. You can pray in tongues. So let me pray for you and release God's grace and hand upon you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that we would begin to activate this weapon, this gift, this supernatural ability of God, you praying through us in languages that we don't know so your perfect will can be done in our lives and the lives of other people. Lord, help us to activate praying in the Spirit in our life, to step out in faith, to open our mouth and begin to pray. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. Again, you can contact me at F crop K R O P P 1948 at gmail.com. And again, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you do so right away and share it with other people. In the meantime, I want you to know the Father loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be best, be blessed, my brothers and sisters.